Welcome viewers. This is the ATN News Editorial. I am your host Richard Morino and my guest Professor Dr. Syed Anwar Hussain, Department of History, Dhaka University. Welcome to the show sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show and it's a greater pleasure when we talk about the ongoing conference of the Inter-Parliamentary Union which is taking place in Dhaka and against the backdrop of a very big party in parliament staying out of parliament. So how do you feel will be the impact of this conference on present issues? I would have been personally happy had the opposition party, I mean they are no longer opposition party because they have forfeited that claim to be the opposition party in a formal sense. They are at least a opposition element at best an opposition element but I would have been certainly happy had there been a clear participation and a strong participation of the opposition element in that conference but since that's not happening it's at least one big thing in the history of Bangladesh because we have to remember this is the first ever big conference being hosted by Bangladesh and we know from the media that about 120 countries have sent their delegates numbering about 1,400 and many of them are women, women parliamentarians. So initially speaking, this holding of the conference, hosting of the conference by Bangladesh would certainly add a great deal to the image of Bangladesh as a democratic country. Because we have to remember that Bangladesh joined this body in 1972 and this body comprises all the democratic countries. Non-democratic countries and countries under martial law regimes are not certainly the members of this body. And Bangladesh has been struggling very hard I should say very hard for institutionalizing So what do you democracy. think are going to be the main issues this conference is going to talk about? Well, there could be many issues as we gather from the media sources. Our Honorable Prime Minister, while inaugurating the conference, has already highlighted some of the issues, especially militancy and terrorism. She suggested that a concerted effort would be necessary to deal with the challenge of terrorism and militancy, which is at the moment a cross-border phenomenon, not simply limited to a country like Bangladesh or any specific country. So she emphasized the concerted effort and endeavor to deal with this challenge. I think this is a scourge to the human civilization at the moment. So humanity would have to master enough strength to do a sort of a good sort of strong work so that militancy couldn't get hold anywhere, any in any country of the world. Secondly, our Prime Minister has also highlighted the issue of autism. Many children, 800 million children especially. So today is the International Autism Awareness Day. Yes, yes. And incidentally speaking, our Honorable Prime Minister's daughter, Saima Wajid Putu, has turned out to be the champion of the United Nations Organization for dealing with autism problem. And we know it pretty well that for some years she has been working very hard for the cause of autism and autistic children all the world over. She has received the right recognition at the moment. So coming back to the IPU conference, the Awami League General Secretary, who is also the Roads and Bridges Minister, he has said it's a great achievement after curtailing, cutting down militancy over the past, you know, couple of weeks to be holding this international conference. Yes, indeed so. The immediate background against which this conference is being held is the 
sudden outburst of militancy all over the country. But I would not say it is militancy because militants have been attacked right in their dens. They were not able to do any militant harm to the nation. So this is a kind of new type of militancy that they are being checkmated right in their dens. But one more interesting and at the same time alarming feature of the present type of militancy is that almost the entire family of the militants is being involved. Yes, sir, in the last incident in, uh, where, where it was said uh, seven or eight militants were killed and there were four, four women and two children. Two children. And, and I also read in the newspaper that a baby of a few months has also been killed in the shootout that ensued after police challenging the militant den. So this is something worrisome and alarming dimension of the kind of militancy that we have been witnessing over the years. So against such a background, this conference, IPU conference is being held. And it is right that our Honorable Prime Minister has already highlighted the threat, the common threat of terrorism and militancy. And I think some decision would be forthcoming from this conference deliber deliberations. And another issue, as you suggested, what are the issues? Another issue which I came across in the media sources, that many of the women parliamentarians have been talking about how far they have been and to what extent they have been harassed by their colleagues while working as parliament members. This is also a worrisome feature of the parliamentarians, especially women parliamentarians while in action or in service as a parliamentarian. So I think this conference is, would certainly sensitize the world public opinion about this kind of problems that we are facing commonly. So we'll come back right to this IPU conference, but we need the break now. Viewers, we go for the break now. Don't go away. Stay with us. Welcome back, viewers. This is Editorial. And my guest, Professor Dr. Syed Anwar Hussain, Department of History, University of Dhaka. Welcome back, sir. And Thank to the you. very sensitive issue we were talking about, gender equality, which definitely this IPU conference is going to pick up. Before the break, I was talking about how the women members of parliament across the countries are being harassed. They themselves voice the problem. So it is a gender issue. In fact, since this meeting is taking place with an issue being talked about like this, I think there would certainly emerge a consensus amongst the participants that they should do something to redress the situation. And I hope women members of parliament or women MPs in any country of the world would from now on not face this kind of harassment since there has been a sort of sensitization of the problem across the country. So the inter-party, uh, inter-parliamentary conference, union conference will definitely talk democracy. What do you feel they should talk about democracy in Bangladesh? Well, before, uh, at the time of starting this discourse today before the camera, I mentioned that democracy is the main theme of the conference because this is a democratic union of the countries practicing democracies in their own countries. And I think democracy at the moment is certainly progressing in numbers, in number of the countries, no doubt about that. But do we have the real democracy in practice? That's the question we need to address ourselves. Well, no country in the world could be called 100% perfect democracy. All the democratic countries do have their own problems in the democratic practice. In the same way, Bangladesh has also 
been facing many problems, many bottlenecks in practicing democracy. I cannot say for sure that we have 100 percent perfect democracy. So, the clear political divide, especially about the upcoming 2019 you know, national elections, do you feel this conference will kind of, you know, cast any kind, what you call it, light at the end of the tunnel regarding uh, coming to an understanding between all the parties? Uh, in fact, considering the political culture of Bangladesh, I do not think, although I would have liked to think that this conference would exert any positive impact on the upcoming national election in Bangladesh so that all the parties would be participating on their own in the election. But we hope so, still hope that the next election would certainly be an inclusive one. By the way, as we are talking about democracy, we have to bear in mind that the history of democracy is certainly a checkered one. It's an institution, democracy, at the same time a process. Democracy gets institutionalized through a long process of practice. Say, for example, Britain, the home of modern democracy, started its democratic practice right back in 1215 with Magna Carta. And the democratic pundits would suggest that not until 1948, Britain could be called a democratic country. So, I do not think there is any reason to despair. Let us practice democracy. What about might be the challenges? Let us respond to the challenges and try to democratize ourselves. I am hopeful and optimistic about the future of democracy in the countries of the world, especially in the third world, Sir, including moving Bangladesh. On, moving on to another important matter that is on the horizon is the upcoming visit to India of our Prime Minister. There has been quite a political stir already regarding the matter, regarding signing of deals. And What do you feel is the overall scenario? Well, Indo-Bangladesh relations is certainly a very important issue, both to India and Bangladesh. And there have been historical bonding between India and Bangladesh, I mean, through the many ages of history, because before 1947, Bangladesh, the territory of Bangladesh was a part of the entire Indian subcontinent. It was only the process of decolonization which divided the subcontinent into two countries in 1947, Pakistan and India. And in 1971, further division came up that is, Bangladesh became independent from Pakistan. So, this process of division and subdivision has been going on for some time. We do not know how long this process would continue, but this sort of balkanization. So, this likely, this likely probable arm deals, arms deal with India, what do you feel it is creating such a stir, giving, you know, giving the fact that Bangladesh recently purchased submarines from China? Well, the possible arms deal or defense pact with India has been much hyped in the press. But to the best of my understanding, I think Bangladesh would not go for is out an outright deal with India. There could be some memorandum of understanding signed between the two countries and Bangladesh expects to get a good deal of financial assistance from India for many ongoing projects of Bangladesh. And at the same time, I do not think it is necessary for Bangladesh to enter into any sort of outright defense pact, not only with India, but with any other country, because that would put Bangladesh in a very difficult situation in so far as conducting of the foreign and strategic relations across the borders. So, this arms deal, if it does happen, how do you feel it might compromise Bangladesh's independence and sovereignty? 
Well, I have the redeeming side in my analysis that the Honorable Prime Minister is a very, very strong personality. We have seen that. She has already demonstrated her strong personality insofar as the stakes of Bangladesh are concerned. Take, for example, the Padma Bridge. She demonstrated her strength of mind in deciding to build the bridge with her own resources. I do not think that our Prime Minister would by any means compromise the interest of Bangladesh by getting into any sort of relationship with India. India is our great neighbor. India is also our best neighbor. And India would, it is in the Indian interest not to turn into the worst neighbor of Bangladesh. India understands that. India seeks Bangladesh's friendship. Bangladesh needs Indian friendship. So the diplomacy, the bilateral diplomacy between the two countries should be like win-win to reach a sort of win-win situation. I mean, but as you know, diplomacy is a very delicate game. Sir, on this note, it's a very, very optimistic note. On this note, uh, that we should be in a win-win situation. Sure. That's all the time we have on this edition, sir. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and we will get you at the first opportunity available. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, today. Viewers, we have come to the end of this edition of Editorial. Stay tuned to ATN News. From me, Richard Moreno, it's goodbye.